Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters. Hope you're all well. I'm trying not to go live because I want to make the most of these uh, 10 days, inshallah, of Dhul Hijjah. Preserve my energy and trying to stay away from online. And we look at these, uh, this dust bee. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's my favorite dust bee. Yeah, I haven't seen one this pretty before. So, inshallah, I'll even find something like this or somebody can buy it for me. <laughs> Yes, yes, okay, anyway, um, I wanted to go make this video before I went to sleep because Sister Summer from Twitter made a really important um, space, Twitter space, and I invited my uh, sister Prina, Prina Ahmed, that you know, sometimes comes onto my live streams with me, to come and listen as well, and mashallah, she managed to join the stage to speak. I requested two times but I think um, maybe someone didn't see or like I kept like tuning in and out I, I was fasting you know so uh, it was about time to open the the rules and everything so I know my sister Prina went and she will inshallah review it a few things I wanted to say in there was that um, I didn't realize that prevent is behind you know teaching uh, children about LGBT in school so sexually uh, you know legally allowing children to be sexually abused at school this is what it is uh, cut, long story short because we we as muslims know this topic is a delicate topic it's an act between a, a married couple even at home when the husband and wife this is what i've read uh, my dad gave me a book off like upbringing of children by i think it's ibn Sirin or something when i was expecting my uh, daughter that like even if it's a husband and wife and when they're they should have a lock on their bedroom door children should knock on the door before they enter so this is how much haya morality and and you know to the right to the t how we should be behaving in front of our children because even they say when when the baby's in the stomach uh you know they the influence the mother has on the child the stuff that she watches she feels it goes on to the child and obviously when the children are small they pick up everything even though they can't speak yet they can pick up everything of what's happening around them so they have many rights you know Allah SWT has given them so this is something that we have to emphasize on when we're speaking about this whole community of LGBT so from the get-go it's completely against Islam completely immoral, immoral completely against the teachings of our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we as Muslims must be a strong voice against it. Um, the thing is, um, many of us are not able to speak up um, and defend ourselves. Maybe because we're not articulate enough. Maybe we don't have, the iman is low. Because you know when you sin, you know it's wrong what, what's happening. But when you sin, you don't have that himmat to speak. You know the strength to speak, confidence to speak. Um, you know I put myself in that category because I obviously can't speak properly or you know articulate myself very well in a big audience or something but I know what's in my heart I know my Allah and I know my Rasulullah and I love my religion and I love my people around me I love the Muslim Ummah and I always want to keep them safe and, and this is um, all I know I don't know anything else okay I didn't go to college or university and stuff like that I went one year college but you know what I mean like I never studied the deen on such a high level that I'm like qualified to give lessons to other people like do that and stuff but I <clears throat> I heard that you know we're, we're meant to be an Ummah so I thought maybe if I can do at least one thing good speak up the things that I know and then maybe other people can do their part as well the scholars do their part and they feel protected as well so they have people like us around them you know making sure that they're able to do their work properly because they have the responsibilities of our uh, prophets on on their shoulders to guide the uh, muslim community away from jahiliya away from degeneracy and we are meant to be you know listening to them applying the the you know the uh, teachings that they tell us into our, our everyday life and encourage the men to go to masjid and the women pray at home do their part so this is how communities work the head of the community are the are scholars the the head of the scholars should be a khalifa should be a amir uh, protecting uh, them protecting the ummah so this we have an uh, you know a hierarchy system where everything is 
preserved and protected how um, every decent society community should be or has always been so um, why I want to main reason why I want to speak today because um, we the lack of leadership that we have in our Muslim Umar that we are also much divided we have pseudo selfies pulling us this way and you have um, then that's you know different sects the sects amongst us that are you know pulling us apart <clears throat> and they're not actually bringing us together our deen was a very simple deen and our sahabas are the standing example for all mankind or all, all generations and all times is that we learn from them how simple they lived and how much they loved Anabisa how much they sacrificed for him, how they were between each other, how they implied justice amongst each other, continuously day and night, feeding the poor, building their empire. And this is I I feel like we are in that generation now because, you know, there are a lot of lot of us around and a lot of us are waking up as well to the reality where before we were all, you know, fast asleep fast asleep you know when our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was being uh, humiliated in France and uh, look at it historically this happened since uh, in France time in the Ottomans time and they were going uh, France was saying that they were going to make a, a play of our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, you know uh, mocking him and Sultan Abdul Hamid said that if you initiate that play the whole of the Muslim world is going to come and do war on you so and this is what it is he just had to say it and these uh, the French were trembling they trembled because they know they couldn't have taken us all on all at once and this is what it is as well our enemies and the shaitan they've studied us very well uh, shaitan obviously you know he went uh, when he saw Adam Islam be created he knew that there was something to worry about and you know he's been around for a very long time studying us and he probably knows us more than we know even even if our even our parents know us so uh, we have to be always on guard about um you know keeping ourselves uh, away from sins and uh, protecting our family and everything i will inshallah always continue to do my part and i will always speak up against injustice and uh, even if it goes against myself try and hold myself accountable as well i'm not perfect you know i haven't come from the perfect background as well and i know like there's so many things that are going wrong but um like i said without our state without an islamic state without an emir without our religion being protected legally um without muslim umar we don't need to compromise and we don't need to even team up with other people we just need that unity amongst each other you know the just read the quran read the hadith ask allah for guidance when you're praying ask allah like understand what you're praying and understand the wudu that we we uh, do before we pray as well how much hikmah is in there um so it's turning into a bit of an uh, islamic lecture isn't it here but this is the key to our success you know when this lies in a 10 out of 10 um you know you'll see for your children as well um inshallah they'll start uh fixing themselves up as well where they're not praying and stuff or you know the moms just need to make that um she just needs to speak and then inshallah they would listen but another thing i was going to say um sister summer's stream is like heartbreaking uh, one of the sisters in there was saying she moved from uk to canada um she's expecting her f she was homeschooling she's expecting her fourth child and what she did she sent the others to school uh one went to a girl school all girls school one one of her boys went to a boys school sports school and eventually uh, for today all four of them are uh, non-muslims they've taken themselves out of the fold of islam and, and this is just because of the teachings that have gone on in in those schools our religion is not respected in uh, secular liberal schools because it goes against their teachings and the other thing you need to understand is if you're go these teachers are coming from some really messed up backgrounds obviously from a very when you go to university the men and women they free mix it's not back back in the days where they had christian values and the girls would keep themselves to each other and the boys now it's it's uh, promoted that you know you have um extra ma uh, sorry relationships outside of marriage uh, sexual promiscuity you've got drugs happening in in the colleges and universities and you've got um which lead alcohol readily available every weekend and it's they have they haven't seen anything out they haven't seen anything good 
um, probably even in their own parents' homes. So they're carrying that kind of lifestyle into the profession that they're going into. So for them, they've had like, say, how long does it take to become a teacher? Four years, five years. Every single weekend, they're out there taking drugs and taking alcohol. So their Zamir is dead inside. You know, they don't have that uh, mercy or that uh, shyness, morality, because they've t- they removed it a long, long time ago from their system. You know, um, this isn't something that you know you can just teach. It is. It takes a lifetime to, um, you know, master. <coughs> is that the correct way of saying it? It takes a long time, like, um, to build these characters, uh, char- characters in you, and this is just, you know, through the teaching of our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All other religions, I say, I, <clears throat> I, I don't rate them because I, I acknowledge you follow them, but all of your leaders, your rulers, um, they've compromised your, your people. I don't want to be part of a group that co- is compromised, you know, from the top down. I want somebody that's a religion that is stable, uh, unbreakable, and the people behind it are a force to be reckoned with. And I believe that this is that the Ummah is just lacking that little bit of unity. And inshallah, we can, you know, very sh- in a very short space of time, have ourselves represented politically, inshallah.